Hello friends, welcome back to the interview question set number three. Remember one of the key point during your interview. Your interview panelist might ask you some 10 to 20 questions and he's not expecting you to answer all the questions right. He's expecting you whatever you answer, you have a deep knowledge, right? So if I'm taking your interview when I'm listening to you, I know how deeply you are answering that and how much knowledge do you have, right? Only when you answer deeply, that's where you will get selected. I will select you or anybody who is taking your interview would select you, right? So that is our personal experience when we take interview. We will see if the candidate is mugging up the answer and trying to talk or he knows it, right? We will select the candidate who knows it rather than who could answer the text right we will understand his practical knowledge so remember this point so before we get into the questions it is required for us to understand deeply and practically and you should practice that on your UiPath studio without practicing in the UiPath studio do not try to remember any of this text and try to go for the interview because this text may not help you quite well okay so that's my key note uh, for this video Okay, let's with, with that note, let's get started and try to learn deeply. What is the difference between data scraping and screen scraping? Okay, this is one of the common questions that would come. Data scraping, screen scraping. Okay, first of all, you should be able to picturize where is data scraping and where is uh, screen scraping, right? So when you open UiPath Studio, click on design. Here you have two options, screen scraping and data scraping. So remember, data scraping is to extract structured data i mean the tabular data from any application or any browser remember that so that is for extracting the structured data now you should at least once use this click on this option and try to hit on next and ensure in the background you have opened the acme system one or any of the tabular data where you have a tabular data open one of the site and try to run this so what would happen this will ask you to hit on next and ask you to select one of the element and it is going to automatically recognize this is a tabular data and once you have the tabular data if you click on yes it's going to extract the data if you can see the entire web page data has been extracted so the, this is data scraping which is going to extract the tabular data so if you remember this image you will be able to answer Pretty good. Now let's go to the second question, screen scraping, right? So when I go for screen scraping, what happens? It is not extracting tabular data, rather from a UI element, it's going to extract what data is there within it. Let's say if I have highlighted this work item, it's going to extract uh, what is written inside that. And to extract that data, it uses some three different options, native, full text, OCR. So these are, these are the multiple options which can be used to scrape the data from a website okay so OCR is optical character recognition so you should if you remember this page then you should be able to answer this question okay screen scraping extract data from a specified UI element or document using full text native or OCR methods remember that okay so practically do it that's what my key point practically try to do it once from your studio before appearing for the interview now the next question that I have what is the difference between step into and step over okay step into and step over is part of your debugging right so let me open this okay so let's do it practically let's go back to yapa studio and hit on the debug now here you have something called step into and step over so remember you must have seen how to use the invoke workflow file so what is happening this one calls another xml file right within that there is another xml file which is being called and it will execute so in such cases what is happening when i am doing step into the step into activity goes into each and every activity within your workflow so let's say it is going to first highlight the main one you saw it got highlighted now if i hit on step into again then the second box got highlighted now if i hit on step into again it's going to go inside that it's not going to come to this one it will go inside this and it's going to highlight. So you know how your workflow is working. Okay. However, the step over what it does, it does not go inside it. It will just stay. It will just highlight the outside container and move to the second one. It will not go inside it. So that is the difference between step into and step over. Step into while using the debugger open 
and highlight the activities in any container you might have in your workflow such as flowchart sequence invoke workflow and file activities so this this are the uh, this is the main difference between the step into and step over so when i go for step over what is happening unlike the step into functionality step over does not open the current container so that is the difference guys so this is what you have to answer during your interview and the panelist will be happy with your answer now let's move on to our next question explain try catch and finally and this is one of the critical question and if you could not answer this i am sure i, I mean nobody would select you because try catch uh, finally is must you must understand this okay now for this before you know try catch go to my channel and go to videos or play uh, go to videos and try to search for try and you will get this video please watch this video without this you are not going to interview because try catch block they would ask you generally they would ask you and they want you to know about this now the try what is the try block is used for the try block is used to hold the activities that could throw an error or exception right and the catch for block is to define the what kind of error you want to catch system error what kind of error you want to catch right holds an activity that informs the user about the found exception now the finally activity remember the finally let's say i am typing or i am keeping any activity in the finally block it is going to execute anyways if there is an error there is not an error doesn't matter it is going to execute finally okay so try is to have all the activities which could throw an error and catch is to define specify the exception type what kind of exception it caught okay so remember this try catch block now and i want you to watch this video and practically practice this example okay then you should be able to clear your interview now let's move on to our next question the next question is difference between excel and workbook activities okay very generic question but he will just look at you just to see how much you really know okay so you have to answer it quite well so remember excel activity to use excel activities you need excel application to be installed on your laptop or on your desktop this is the first point wherein your workbook doesn't require a excel application if you do not have excel application or ms office package you can still use a workbook activity and run your workflow okay second one all the activities needs to be used with an ex within an excel application scope okay for the excel activities it has to be encapsulated within an excel application scope and this is not required for a workbook you may not be able to access password protected sheets okay workflow uh, will still execute if excel file is open but the drawback here is if your excel file is open if you are using a workbook activity it will throw an error it will not execute so these are the couple of differences if you could explain it well to your interviewer panelist he will be able to happy to listen to you and he will be happy to even select you okay great now let's move on to our next question explain how to use anchor base activity okay this is very very critical guys anchor base activity because most of the project what i am involved uh, right they were solved just by using a anchor base activity where you do not have a relative um, selector so re reliable selector so for all of this what you do you you always search on my channel okay try to see if you if i have a video in case i do not have always let me know i will create one but again anchor base activity so let's see let's go to your path studio and let me use a an anchor base act activity so what is it and how it is used let's see that okay so anchor if you know it it's good but how will you explain you have to know okay so let's say if i'm dragging and dropping an anchor base activity there are two things inside an anchor base activity one is the anchor another is drop action activity here now this is what you have to answer anchor base activity is a container that searches for a ui element by using other ui element as anchors so it will use one ui element as anchor so generally you will be using a find element activity right find so in the anchor portion you will say find element and you will drag and drop within the anchor and indicate on screen and let's say you want to click in the activity you will use a click activity so this is the general usage so remember an anchor base if the anchor is on the right hand side if it is in the top so you can set it to auto you can make it to uh, right side if your anchor is on the right hand side and all of that so for anchor base activities also i should be having a video look for that 
So this should be your answer. A container that searches for UI element by using other UI element as anchor. This should be used when a reliable selector is not available. Okay, reliable selector also in my playlist. I have a playlist called selectors. Okay, and selector is one of the key component or key knowledge you should have uh, while trying to get a job in UI path. Okay, so ensure UI path selector playlist you go through completely. Okay, go through it completely. There are some 17 videos I have created because they are very very important. So you should go through all of them. So you should have a great knowledge about selectors, and I'm sure you should be able to satisfy uh, questions asked by your interview panelist. Okay, that is the agenda. Get deep knowledge. Go for the interview, and I'm pretty sure you'll get going to get a job. Go through all the playlist I have on my channel, and you should be able to answer pretty well in your interview. Okay, guys. So that's all for today. I am going to come up with next set of interesting questions which might come in your interview. Thank you for watching. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for having patience uh, while I was not able to upload couple of videos in the past couple of months. Thank you very much for all your patience and thanks a lot for all your love and support. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.